Good day, friends, and I hope you're having a good week. I come to you from downtown campus, St. Paul UMC, and thank you for sharing a moment with me as we have gotten deeper into this season of Lent, this journey toward the cross and beyond as God's people. We ponder what exactly sin is. If we take our cue from the Apostle Paul and some of the very wordy and eloquent language that he talks about, that he uses in the book of Romans, we hear him talking about sin as something even bigger than we usually think about. Hear these words, translation from the fifth chapter. Sin came into the world through one man, Adam, and death came through sin, so death spread to all human beings because all human beings have sinned. And the consequence of that sin was dominion, one dominion through death. That sounds pretty grim, doesn't it? <laughs> not only that, it's, it's not our usual way of thinking about sin. The usual way is to think of, you know, a sin here or a sin there, a little sin or a big sin, a venial sin or a mortal sin, as the Catholic Church talks about it. But always in terms of, of these kind of individual discrete acts, if you will. Sometimes the classic words are sin of omission or a sin of commission. In fact, that old prayer we used to pray more often, authored by Thomas Cramner, we have left undone those things which we ought to have done, and we have done those things which we ought not to have done. That's one of the best definitions of sin ever written, and I, you know, I wish we said it more often, but even that great prayer doesn't get to the heart of what Paul is saying here in the book of Romans, chapter 5. Paul is saying that sin, sin with a capital S, is this reigning power, this reigning monarch, if you will, in league with its fellow tyrant death, and it's advancing through the world like an annihilating army. And Paul assumes that really what no one in our world ever assumes, unless you're kind of trained in the Scripture. And that is, we have an idea about the origin of this. Adam was placed in the Garden of Eden with a choice. Adam could choose to live in perfect harmony with God and, you know, with God's creation and, and with Eve and with himself, free from sin. Adam made a different choice. And the result is that from that time forward, there has been no choice. Oh, we have choices, you can choose what kind, of buy, what kind of car to buy if you have the money. Uh, but no one has been able to choose to step outside of this iron rule of sin and death. To just choose to do it. The sign of sin and death lies across all the things that tell you they give life. All these things says, just trust me, I'm the answer, I'll give you life. But we find that all of that is a lie. The first man, Adam is strong, but the second man, Christ, is stronger still. And so Paul says, where sin increased, grace abounded all the more, so that as sin reigned in death, grace might reign through God's righteous, righteousness to eternal life through Christ Jesus our Lord. We'll talk about more about this this week, but we find that our victory finds, we find victory through Christ the victor, who is so much more power, powerful than the power of evil. Where sin increased, grace abounded all the more. Thanks be to God. That is the word for you and for me today and always. See you next time.